The role of filmmaker in sustaining cultural development in contemporary Nigerian society. A case study of Tunde Kilani's film, Aruba. This video essay will consider a brief introduction of the Nigerian film industry, an introduction to the film Aruba and why it was chosen, discuss a few cultural elements or representations in the movie, explore a few questions on how Tunde Kilani's film Haruba has helped preserve societal values in an interview segment, and conclude on challenges and opportunities for filmmakers in promoting culture through cinema in Nigeria. Film is the most effective medium of cultural expression used by many to promote, propagate, and preserve cultural heritage for future generations. Jonathan Haynes emphasizes the importance of paying attention to Nigerian videos, highlighting that they present the most robust and easily accessible presentation of contemporary Nigerian popular culture, an embodiment of the creative imagination of Africa's most populous nation. Nollywood is the widely recognized name for the Nigerian film industry internationally. Coined by Matt Stinglass, it was first used in the 2002 New York Times article to define and encapsulate the essence of Nigerian film industry. Subsequently, the name has continuously been used to describe the industry. Aruba is a 2010 cultural political satire film created by Okomoliru Productions and directed by Tunde Kilani Films that features a love story, tradition, modernization, and healthcare system as a prominent part of this entertainment culture film. Aruba is the story of a corrupt king, Kabiesi, and his corrupt chiefs who profess to fight corruption. Added to two, the king's niece is traditionally linked to becoming the next Aruba, the maiden who brings the sacrificial calabash to the yearly Oshobu Oshun festival. This role necessitates accountability and respect for both the virgin and her family. However, because the present king is solely interested in the reputation of his immediate family, he begins to arrange his niece's downfall. Adetutu is consequently involved in a variety of scenarios in which she must pay close attention to her obligations. The story, which is a true reflection of the people of Oshun State in Nigeria, is a perfect fit as it highlights many cultural elements that give a perfect interpretation of contemporary Nigerian society and the cultural invasion by Western influence. It is of relevance to consider one of the masterpiece movies by Tunde Kilani, a veteran with career spanning more than four decades who specializes in producing movies that promote Nigerians' rich cultural heritage and have a root in documentation, archiving, education, entertainment, and promotion of the culture. Tunde Kilani's ability to expertly integrate elements of Yoruba culture, music, and language into his films is one of his distinguishing features as a director, considerably contributing to the preservation of the Yoruba legacy. Furthermore, many of Kilani's films serve as a compelling platform for tackling important societal issues such as traditional beliefs, urbanization, and everyday difficulties that regular Nigerians confront. In an online interview segment with TK, he expressed how his approach to filmmaking has helped to preserve the Nigerian culture, especially with a massive influx of Western content into Nigeria. TK's movie exemplifies his lifestyle, imagination, and talent which are related to the Hutter theory which states that the director is viewed as the major creative force in a motion picture. So I came out of Dodon Film School, I worked a bit in television again, and then I became an independent filmmaker from then on. It's easy for me to say that I just needed a medium, in which case I chose the medium of film just for my cultural expression. I lived in the community in Abekuta and witnessed everything and saw everything, you know, and so I just needed to something to document what my cultural experience. And more or less, that is what I do today. So the issue of cultural, socio-political awareness. It came to me naturally when I was young. So it's not that I'm looking for, so no, I already had what to do and I knew what to do and I got the medium to do it. And for me, the whole concept of global cinema is about cultural expressions. And it wasn't difficult for me to decide what language the film was going to be in and things like that. Because I, I have benefited from global cinema. 
Japanese, Chinese, Akira Kurosawa, India, European cinema, and all of that. In all of this, I was conscious that the language of the film is in their own language, and mm. they just give us a subtitle. Therefore, there's a validity for my Yoruba films with subtitled in English, French, or Portuguese. We have a Portuguese subtitle of Shawo De, for instance, and some of the films already. You know, so for me, it was uh, it's nothing really. It just came to me quite naturally. And not just in what my work. No, I decided as soon as I left secondary school and I gained some kind of control over my life in what I'll be wearing, how it's going to be designed, you know, and all of these things. So this is me. So basically, uh, I'm an advocate of indigenous cultural expressions. And oh. if you know, Nigeria, we have 300 of them. And in Africa, we have over 2,000. Some years back, precisely in 1983, I was privileged to be part of the people on the location of Agbari to understudy the production process of Uncle Tunde Kelani. And one thing that has really endeared some of us to his work is his ability and the passion that he has to be able to express his cultural values in his Yoruba movies. TK started what I will call the cultural revolution. The culture of Yoruba is so, so important to him. Kilani believes Nullyhood filmmakers are performing poorly by not telling enough stories about the numerous multicultural society despite all the rich resources in the region. I think that in a way we have failed because I can't see the diversity in Nigerian films. Definitely, we cannot, haven't done much. Even in Africa, 2,000 different cultures, and it's not reflecting. The diversity is not showing in cultural productions. The Nigerian nation is simply too big and diverse to be fully represented by one kind of film. Considering the numerous edutainment stories in Africa, such as the landscape, the people, the wildlife, traditions, carnivals, hat and craft, and natural resources, it is expected that filmmakers will explore and express the beauty of the region through the eyes of the lens. So the question is, as yes. regards cultural themes and representation, the film depicts a sequence which has three religious representations. Why did you include this thing? First of all, I love markets. When I make films, I try to put the markets in it because it's so colorful. So it wasn't difficult for me to to put the market in it. I, I think the Yoruba is the most peaceful geographical entity in the world today. We have sort of a, the, the three legacies in a family, Christian, Muslim, and traditionalist. We live together. We are yeah. the same one. We are related. And of course, we have a culture that's growing us together. You know, so every time I demonstrate this, I don't have to demonstrate it because it's already there. And these are the elements that I use in those scenes. But let me just add to that because there's another scene that is similar to the question I just had. That was towards the end. While the Aruba was going, they spoke to the Imam who was upstairs that they're already going for the ride. And he said, ah, keep going, keep going. We'll, we'll meet you. So it, it showed that, you know, they were all living in peace. He, he didn't mind that he was an imam, and of course, it's not he, only. It's that. not only. That. First of all, in the in the procession, they pass in front of a church, and yes, the pastor yes, of that yes. church, and the pastor said, "May the Lord be with you." Mm, mm, so you understand? Mm. May the Lord be with you. Culture has been of significant value to the people of Yoruba origin, which has helped them to tolerate one another no matter the religious differences. The region has mutual respect and forbearance, which can be traced back to the value system embraced within the region. The question is how can we define the nature of preserving indigenous culture in contemporary Nigerian society with reference to two different things in the movie? The first is the scene where the king's grandchildren stands to greet the royal king rather than prostrate or nail. 
Then the second is the same, which the village maiden could not look into the face of the oracle. Great Kabyesi. Good morning, Grandpa. Good morning, Grandpa. Grandpa, Grandpa, Lazar, I want to help you, brother. Help you, brother. Who is this Kabyesi? My teacher said we should stop saying that jaga jaga again. Ha! Lady, then. You wash away when you watch your call, I think, quite almost two more points and key and need to carve road, Gilly. And I've been a baby. Oh, dear, what boy you bar? What boy you bar? No, to. Okay. What is this in Yoruba? Demi. It is Kinum. No, it is a long. Ah! We still have not recovered from our colonial mentality. They took everything, not just us as slaves, and took everything, took our brains as well. In the case of that scene in the past, it shows you the degradation and what we are going through at the moment, everything being eroded. You know, in Shaurede, you know, the character of Palaba, the of Aliti, he sings. Or a young bow, or a young bow, a young lady by low level. As I go about, I'm gathering, if I'm listening to people, how do people talk, how do they, how do they react? Let me tell you, in almost all the palaces we have today, the, the children don't speak Yoruba at all mm. in the palaces. And in most homes of the elite and all those politicians you see, they don't speak Yoruba in their home. The children can't. So basically, that is the challenge that we have today to equate education to another way of life, to follow the colonizer, you know, and uh, abandon your own. In fact, in Ifa text, and Ifa text says in Yoruba, tenita abi wamo wamo, tenye le nilon ya lara, because like they have foreseen that there'll be a time when they look down on their own and then run they abandon their own and run after the the foreigner see so basically that is a problem that is happening these days look i've worried worry sick that uh, the yoruba language may disappear and things like that, we can lose it. But I'm so confident now that if in the homeland, the, the Yoruba language becomes extinct, it won't outside. Because the amount of academic work that is done on Yoruba in the world today is not even Yoruba land. You have to travel, you know, to maybe South America and Cuba and all those places. So... There's no worry about that. So I hope perhaps if there's a process of reorientation and they go back to the schools and say, in fact, they're trying to make some feeble attempt. They should make the indigenous, indigenous languages the, the primary language in the primary schools all over again. You know, So that is one of the challenges that we face. This reality is happening. As society interacts with the Western system, mostly with the influence of films, the impact is gradually seen as the new generation seems to have a preference for some of the Western behaviors and practices. Consulting the Ifa Oracle is a form of cultural tradition in Yoruba land that is referred to as sacred divinity intervention to help counsel and reveal what is to happen or needs to be done. This ritual is performed by an Ifa priest who acts as an intermediary be between the people and the deity. To perform the ritual, a deity too must have preserved herself from sexual engagement and must be a virgin. Sometimes they go to divination to recover a stolen item or to find a culprit, but the condition is that it has to be a virgin. A virgin, unless if you had known any man, then you cannot you cannot see it and you cannot see anything and it turns out that most of the girls in the palaces are no virgins and the queen looked at her own daughter and said i'm sure about my own daughter now hey come on look at look and see it and she just scratched her head and then the second girl now scratched her head and you know added to who is in fact in the university 
was just passing by and say, what is it? And say, look at it. I can look at it. And she looked in the river and said, no, no, no. It's not fair. You know, there's no, there's nothing. I can't say anything in that. You know, say if she says there's nothing in it, then it's not lost. There is nothing. Yeah. That the other, it's, not, it's not stolen. It's not lost. And we found out later that it was just misplaced. You know, mm -hmm. so that that's just that's just to show the decadence, just to show what the society had become. After the film Aruba, we took it around some, I think fifty something secondary schools to screen wow. it and to record the screening. You know, we did post screening discussions and we recorded it. And some of the girls are <laughs> in secondary school; they are they are just laughing at us. Oh, you know yeah. that uh, we they passed that stage already. The cultural integrity looks to be on the on the downward trend, kind of now. Anyway, it is. There's no doubt about it. You know now, and look at the challenges. Cultural integrity made her attitude to be disciplined in her dealings, despite all the threats around her. Tunde Kilani has consistently used his filmmaking prowess to portray value and responsibility of the cultural values in the Yoruba land and Nigeria as a whole. What elements best help you as a filmmaker present an understanding of cultural values in Aruba? For example, we saw the costumes, the environment, the language, the landscape, the cinematography. I mean, to you, what specifically was the best or the, the, the elements that actually helped you more? To, to project what the cultural science in the movie there. You know, it's the totality of our culture. Culture is about development. You have already mentioned most of those things yeah. that you have noticed in the film. I put food because mm. the film is, is diplomacy. It's a soft diplomacy because you are showing you know, your audience. And believe me, I, I'm lucky because I have an audience base. And that is because I try to tell authentic stories and I look into my environment. Essentially, it's about my environment. And you have already noticed uh, costume, dance, landscape, design. Let me tell you, a few years ago, I was lucky to be working with Richard Taylor of the BBC World Service, the documentary filmmaker. Is like a mentor, and he came, you know, into Nigeria and worked here and went back. And again, I came back, and sometimes I film, you know, some of his documentaries. And he asked me if I had thought about relocating, and I said, I, I don't think so. I studied in England. I didn't stay a day, a day longer, because. I need Ocean River, I need Ogun River, I need Olumoro, I need uh, your town, I need in telling my story, I need Oshobu. I can't find those things in anywhere, anywhere than here at home. So that's why at every opportunity, I use everything that I can find in the environment in telling the story. Change is said to be constant. Kilani is helping the unborn generation to preserve the cultural values with his fame so that development will not erode those values. Uh, most of your movies always portray a female as a protagonist. In Aruba, I did to educate a friend about HIV, is a dance group leader, is a confirmed virgin, rescues kidnapped victims, saves the community with the rituals, and many other heroic actions. What cultural value is inscribed in the strong female character of Adetutu? It probably came with my childhood and the way I grew up because I was born in Lagos, but at age five, my father just plucked me from and threw me into the family compound at Abekuta. And I missed my mother, you know, but found out that traditionally I had more mothers you know, in the family compound that just my mother. From that experience, I realized that position of the African women in society and uh, how they have not been given uh, the respect and appreciation that they deserve. I subconsciously held on to that. And you can see what has happened. In fact, the beneficiary are the actresses that play those parts. In the case of uh, Bukola Awoyemi, who played the Aruba, 
That's why today her handle, we call her and she's put Aruba in her name officially. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> and that is what, and she's a graduate from the University of Illinois. And that's exactly what I meant. And Aruba, that is just, just it doesn't suffer inferiority complex or anything like that, but who is quite enlightened in decide to become a cultural icon. She's expected to be a woman leader, a youth leader in the community, despite education and so she's able to interact with the women, with local women. The African girl child, you know, in Aruba, they had aspirations. Because at the end of the thing, she's telling the boy that, look, when I get out of school, I'm talking to start this NGO that we do the African women have been abused over time with laws, cultures, and decisions that did not favor or celebrate them. TK has been able to use fame to change the old narrative about African women, re-establish them as ambitious, passionate, strong, knowledgeable, and multi-talented beings. Today, African women have risen to positions and we can only hope they gain more respect in our society. The theme Aruba addresses several environmental issues such as corrupt practices, religion tolerance, cultural acceptance, poverty, rape, HIV, deceit, intolerance, and many other social practices, which is related to the entertainment education theory. Entertainment education theory of filmmaking is a communication technique that uses custom tailored entertainment to address a social issue or educate the audience to achieve desired individual, community, institutional, and societal changes among the intended media user populations. This theory is valid for Tunde Kilani and his film, Aruba, as the entertainment film educates the audience and addresses social issues. What are the challenges and opportunities for filmmakers in promoting culture to the cinema in Nigeria? Well, um, my own business file may not have been a good model, you know, because yeah. you are primarily making films to make money. That's the, it's a business, it's a money. Yeah. But um, there are certain responsibilities that, you know, we of that generation still hang on to. Today, the template to get funding, for instance, just to comply with what the funders are asking you to do. They must see violence, sex, bad language, substance abuse, and so on. And that will give you ready-made money. TK proposed that the government should provide funds as an encouragement to filmmakers to produce good cultural movies rather than movies that are offensive. That should be a state responsibility to create a form, especially for filmmakers who may be interested in promoting cultures. It's unlikely that you're going to be funded for promoting cultures. But things are beginning to change gradually. An example is the Oscar debate that happened a few years ago when Nigeria also formed a committee that will send Nigeria entry into the foreign language category of Oscar. And they send yeah. a film and they, they threw it back and say, no, it has to be your indigenous language. And that's why yeah. you now have this new wave of films made in the Yoruba language. Left to young people this day, they will go for the money. So why make film in Yoruba language? Unless it's a cultural policy that set aside certain funds for people who are going to be promoting the culture. It's a challenge these days. I think there's a battle for the soul of the African. And if care is not taken, the culture is gone. Wow. This essay theme has looked into an analysis of Tunde Kilani's film, Aruba, on the position of a filmmaker in maintaining cultural advancement in modern Nigerian society. This project has clearly defined how filmmakers help in promoting societal values, norms, and traditions through films and highlights the influence of Western behavior in a modern Nigerian society. 
This essay theme reveals how Nigerian cultural integrity has been on the decline and how the Yoruba language should be protected and promoted to avoid its extinction, especially with the influx of Western behaviors. It is expected that the government, policymakers, practitioners will create a level ground for new generation filmmakers who are interested in making societal films to have access to financial support and good policy in order to produce more cultural friendly contents that will help promote Nigerian society and our stories. This practice, which is common in developed countries like the United Kingdom, have proven effective and will help promote traditional Nigerian stories which are now being sought after by streaming services such as Netflix, Apple TV and other broadcast medium. Kunle Afolayo and Femi Adebayo are producers who are trailing the path of TK and one can only hope that more fame makers will join the quest of producing cultural films. TK is restless in the mandate of global propagation of cultural stories with his films like Dazzling Mirage and Ayala streaming on Netflix. He said he has five more movies in view with Cordelia being the very next to be released. I am five films away says Tunde Kilani in an interview about his current Netflix-directed movie, Anila.